about how a person with all the best intentions has to look at himself and see what really is happening. Is there games taking place, things happening? What is being done? You know it says that it's a very big thing if a person hears somebody embarrass you, somebody that degrades you, somebody that uh, makes you feel low and bad. And you have the ability to react have the strength to react. But what do you do? How there's a stimuli and a response. Stimuli means something is there and you have to respond. Somebody now embarrasses you. You should feel bad and low. And you have the ability to answer back. You have the ability to win. You have the ability to explain yourself. You have the ability to straighten things out. And there you have the Yisim Eki and Hashem Yisrael, you check it out. So we have a rule at a certain place, not every place, but the basic rule. The other things I told you are exceptions to the rule. But the rule is, or should be, Shomei al bono, becher paso, ve'eno meishu, and you don't answer back. Now if you don't answer back, what happens? I tell you what happens. You hold it in, and you hide it inside, then it eats you up, and then it has to come out some way and explode in a way that it's worse than how you answer back right away. Answer back right away, at least you got out of your system, told the truth, you feel good, you're, uh, uh, you corrected the other person, make sure the other person will be more your Jemayim, should do those things, you help change the balance in the world, whatever it may be. That's a good position. But it's not a question of not answering. An answering means that, that that which they did to you, you've taken it and you've moved it to which dimension? To eat yourself up, to hold a grudge, and you're a little sick you know, take revenge. What do you do when, when something like that happens? So now we get a text. It says, Ramosha, Ish, Moshe, Onam, Oon, Mikol, Onam. We got to see what does Moshe Rabbeinu do. What does Moshe Rabbeinu do? How does he react in different situations? If Moshe is the one of Mikol Adam, so it's our job to see what Moshe Rabbeinu does. How does he act? How does he react in the situation? And also, when he does something, what does Hashem say? He's okay, not okay. He separated his distinct quality of Anova, humility. Like, Kishem Shibikesh's Kvodi, Mi Lashem Eli. Since Moshe doesn't ask his needs, and we may ask for my needs, that's God's needs, therefore I will take care of his needs. That's a very strange formula. I don't know if anybody can do that. That you don't take care of your needs, speak up, and you only take care of the needs of others. So then what happens is you need Hashem to take care of your needs. 
usually it takes places you may want to help others, but uh, at the end you don't see anybody taking care of you any. You become like a, uh, a, a doormat, a, a sponge, you know, nobody. You know. <coughs> and we say that this was Moshe Rabbeinu's strength. and our own criticized Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe didn't answer that. So what is this person? How does Moshe Rabbeinu really act? When he so, I've talked about it for years, but I won't explain it. He's, he's embarrassed, not that he's not embarrassed, he's embarrassed, he's embarrassed, but, ooh, shalom, shalom, he's embarrassed, he's embarrassed, and, uh, come here. He's embarrassed, but what does he do? He accepts his embarrassment, and he internalizes it by saying what? I accept upon myself the din, the judgment. I accept that whatever is done in the world is just. I may not understand it, and keeps quiet. What happens when you do that? Then the gzeroth, all these negative force, but you being a master of yourself, but it's more than a master, you accept God's will. <coughs> now, in order to accept God's will, in order to do that, you have to be strong. You gotta become a positive person. You can't say, well, I, I'm bad, I'm not good, and at the end you come out as a <coughs> sick person, a person who's depressed, person feel that he's no good, bad, <coughs> guilty. <coughs> it's also to give you internal strength that what? That you accept God and you're accepting God's judgment. In other words, it's but a, you can't let, let, let's get the story. You didn't get the whole story again. You have the ability to answer back. <coughs> you have the ability to justify it. Right? And now you get the criticism, the embarrassment. If you internalize it and uh, accept, accept it, then I'm no good, I'm bad, and uh, that's also that's not strength, that's weakness. Or if you just accept the embarrassment, I'm a shmata, nothing, whatever, that's you know, the same story, just no good. If you recognize the Almighty is good and kind and you're getting your punishment in this world and therefore you recognize, you start searching how to improve yourself, you're using it again as a means to improve yourself, to grow. Or, stronger than that, since everything comes from God, you accept His judgment, you accept His will, totally, the simcho, the avo, and, and Adorab is going to create for you more strength, one second, more strength, more love of God, more care. And, uh, and on that basis, the Almighty sees that you accept His will, not because you're doomed and you can't do nothing about it. Not because you really understand that the Almighty runs with one that the Almighty is good and he's trying to correct you in some way and you're looking for the correction. Correction means change to grow. It's a correction means a process of growth. It's not that you're down and no good and bad and you're zero. It's a correction for growth. So then it's part of growth. It's not a negative. It turns into the force of a positive force. We mention all the time that 
this one of some of the strongest force in man is negative. The person doesn't want to be bad or dumb or nothing or lonely. That's a force to push a person. So when you have that criticism, so you, I want to change, I want to grow, I want to become better, I want to be a better person. I accept the embarrassment, it's most likely I hurt the person's feeling, it's not accepted. And not only that, I'm going to try not to do it again, I'm going to prove I'm going to be a better person. But you use strength to take this negative energy and switch it to a positive force to make you go even higher. Because he's going to go higher, Moshe Rabbeinu. So I see him going higher, it's at that point. Because if you do a high position, he gets rewarded. אבל מה קורה בפנים השם? השם אמר שלא סובלים ולא אומרים. כמו שזה רע לבן אדם להגיד כנגד the other person, להביע את הפרסטרשן של זה, זה גם רע אם אוכלים את זה ואוכלים, לא מעכלים את זה באופן טוב. יש בן אוכל ולא אוכל את זה טוב ולא טוחן את זה טוב, זה לא טוב בשביל הגוף. איך תוכנים את זה, איך אוכלים את הבושה? זה הבעיה. איך זה נשאר בבן אדם, איך זה עובד עם זה אופן חיובי שמשתמשים בזה הלאה, או זה דבר שלילי שהורס את הבן אדם וסובל, ואחרי זה... אז אם זה שלילי, אז מה עושים? זה לא עוול, זה לא ענב, זה לא טוב. ושני ה... שני הכיוונים לא טוב. לא זה ולא זה. אבל יש לי שאלה, אם אני כן סובלת, אם אני כן נעלבת בפנים, אם אני עושה סדר שאני עושה לי ביזיון ואני אוכלת, ואני עושה סדר, אני לא אומרת כלום, ואני נשמחה עם הביזיון הזה, שאני אומרת... אבל מה, אני שמח, מה קורה בעת בפנים? אתה שמח שאיך אתה יכול להיות שמח שיש לך ביזיון, זה לא נורמלי. אדם עבר זה אותי ואני שמח. מה אני שמח? על מה אני שמח? שאני מכפרת על הפרנות אחרים. זה בא מהקודש ברוך הוא, אני מכפר על הפרנות. אז ברוך השם שמה? אהלהלה, יש לי הרבה מה שנתכפר. איך את מרגישה שנתכפר על הפרנות באמת? נניח, איך מרגישים? איך מרגישים? איך מרגישים? איך מרגישים? איך מרגישים? איך מרגישים? אז אם אני שמחה, אז באמת זה מכפר לי על הפרנות, שאני לא מכפר לזה. זה תלוי, אם באמת... זה מכפר או לא מכפר? לא יודעת, איך אני... זה תלוי איך אתה, איך את אוכלת את זה. ואנחנו מדברים על זה עוד דקה. כן, 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 But what happens now? It's not that it goes through at the same time. No, but how does it twist and turn in a positive way? How do you grow from it? One thing is let it go, and Baruch Hashem, you didn't hold on to it. But now that you let it go, what is your reaction you let it go? Are you happy? Does it help you grow? Is it a positive force in you? That's the problem. Yes, what do you want to ask me? Uh, if, if Moshe knew that he was right, So the pain comes from the people close to him, and misunderstood, and didn't give him... Where's his pain? That's terrible pain. He got embarrassed. But he... I'll be honest, he didn't do anything wrong. I don't know if he did wrong or not wrong. We but now, know. why did he feel embarrassment? I don't know what the story is. Let's see, why does he feel embarrassment? Right? right. Why does he have the boot? Um, they could have said a half-truth. They could have said uh, something not proper, they were really wrong, not true, but still, it's embarrassing. Here you're working very hard and you're inside there, go inside there, and uh, somebody says, ah, you're a selfish person, that's why you're not here. And 
And what about the relationship, like clarification for the sake of intimacy? Okay, now, we're not, that's another, I said, the, the, the real position is this position. The, the clarification or explaining yourself is a secondary position. The primary position is to accept Hashem's will and come out healthy and positive with it of what takes place. This is the proper position. Now, many times you have to explain, maybe times so, those or whatever it may be, those are exceptions for the rules that may be needed for whatever reason. Well, I would think coming from a stranger and because to work it out, we create intimacy, maybe that's the Yeah, yeah, but you see, but before you get working it out, how did you feel? Mm -hmm. Terrible. Now, how did you handle that terrible? So you handle it by saying, okay, I'll work it out. In other words, I'm going to hold it, and I'll work it out. You want to know how we can take that feeling inside and twist it to a positive force. Of course, you got to work it out. But we're talking about in turn, not to get guilt, how to get strength from it, how to accept God's will better, okay. how to uh, turn out an Ishik Sheva, how do you get your Shemaya Abbas Hashem from it? That's what we're talking about, the internal aspect of that. Uh, maybe this is not on the subject, but I always wonder with the kids, sometimes one of the kids who comes crying because someone told her, she, someone called her stupid. Or someone said to her, that's not your toy. And it is. She knows it's her toy, she knows she's not stupid. Or someone said to her, uh, I don't know, something stupid. And they come crying. I said, why do you care what they said? If you know it's not true, you know you're not stupid. Why are you crying because they said you're stupid? I don't understand why it upsets them. It's a very simple thing. We explain. There are words and concepts. When you say, I know I'm not stupid, that's a concept. When somebody says words, so the words are real. Children, words are real. Now, let's say they're wrong. Now, but the words are real. So it's like you take a knife and cut a, uh, uh, a finger, or you do this, cut thread, whatever it is, so that's real. So words, the children are real. As you get older, words are dictionary. Words are cheap, but you know, not real. But there are concept people and word people. And therefore, when you talk in terms of uh, word, and they say you're, you're stupid, and she knows she's not stupid, and she wants to be smart, show off her smartness, or she wants to be seen who she is, that comes out, and for her, the social life of acceptance of friends, etc., is equal to reality to her. Because she's in a dream world, words and reality are a friend. That her reality collapsed. That's now, crazy. she doesn't have that internal strength of, huh, you're stupid, I'm okay. She doesn't yet contradict the other person she doesn't have that strength yet. Because it's a very serious time. I want to tell you something. If you'll shut your eyes and think of maybe 10 cases that are things in your youth that affected you even today still affect you today. And you still have to relive it through and change and grow from it. That could be nothing. Your brother beat you up, or your name, stupid, or you your chicken, or you your, your extra portion, and your mother didn't help you in justice, or you feel that uh, uh, nobody loves you, uh, you know, you just, whatever, take, think of ten little stories in your life. Just whatever comes to your mind, you'll find out. And you'll always see those stories affect your life forever. Unless you rechange those sensitive moments that you have, it's still ingrained in you all the fears and all the way. You push it away, but really, you're still reliving those things. Is that so simple? Of those days when they said, you're a stupid, it was like a knife and all, whatever reason it is. And that's there all her life. And later on, they say, I mean, she gets A's and everybody applauds, she gets all these diplomas, she says, I'm stupid, no good. And she can't enjoy the smartness because that person, when she was a young girl, said to her, she's stupid. We go way around, I mean, you're laughing. Now, it could be. It has no meaning to the girl. The girl says she felt the and it goes on. So in her repertoire of neural association, whatever she has, has no meaning. You don't know what. You never know in anybody's child or your life what words have meaning to you or what has an effect on you. The only way you do is by working on your husband and that fish. And you see, as time goes by, what repeats and what is. You have to go back to you and relive it and change those things. It's hard to change because... Don't forget, you still read a lot of your personality today is 
built upon what you did in you. So, and you're already living with your sickness, and you don't want to change yourself, and then you lose your identity. You don't know who you are anymore. If you hold on to your sickness, it's hard to change. It's very, uh, it's really very hard. Um, what we're really talking about. Yeah. That we have to accept what Hashem does and anything is righteous. Yeah, but it's more than that. Yes, yes. It's more than that. Yes. I, I just want to ask you is that it seems like uh, to be positive. Now that's yeah, what, what does that mean? That's that what I mean. That is that to cut, you can't cut it from actions. Otherwise, you know, what's the word? You don't, you don't even want to say that people uh, say, accept what Hashem does and be positive and blah, blah, blah. And then what? How? You can't. If Hashem does something that it is, let's say, punishment or something hard, I think it's about to cut it from an action because our Lama life care, Hashem does things, has no, I, reasons. I never, I never said that. You see, your language and my language. See, something happens, you accept it and be positive. They're disjointed uh, thoughts. It's not. No, 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 no. no. Said, no, Hashem does you accept or accept it and now I got to be positive we're saying something else we're saying, taking these feelings accepting this then you want to correct it you have to eat it how are you going to eat it it's exactly the problem that you not that be positive how are you going to turn that into a positive experience to grow from and be part of growth that's the problem that's what the problem. how do you translate that into a positive force to grow in. That's not what that is. That is not what that is. You mean like to grow from it. How do you grow from it? God sent you this wonderful message. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or the measure, whatever the message is. You know what I mean? Now, how are you going to handle that? I can answer, yeah, I'm stupid. And therefore, I don't see the world right. Maybe I'm not reading the message. I don't see the broader picture. Therefore, I act what I do. You know what I mean? And now I, I got to recognize it's a message. And a person told it to me, he told it to me, God sent to me in a, not a nice way. He had some embarrassed me to say it, but really that is the message. Now what am I going to do about it? How am I going to change myself? Because I see people see me that way and I wanted to hide it. Now I can't hide it anymore. Now I'm going to fool the person. Like, ah, come on. And I, and I got an A this and graduate college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to take Look the sticks from anybody else. Well, Not to take the sticks from anybody else. Yeah, no, I didn't say to take it, but when you get a message, you're embarrassed. How do you retranslate it? God's will, and how do you grow from it and live it? Now, God knocked on the door. He can tell you many ways, whatever he wants to do. You can get money. You can get money. You can have an inheritance. You can the pious. You can get a matana. You can have this. But also, if you don't have the money, you can do it. You have to borrow. And then you have to squeal and just, you know, roll like you got to sneak or do something not exactly 100% kosher. I mean, I don't know. You have zero to 100. How do you get your money? What do you have? Same thing yet. God wants you to have money. God wants you to have happiness. Or, or this. How did you get it? What way? Now, God wants you to change your meat, though. So you got this embarrassment to you. Okay, not so nice. So, but there's a message here. What's the message? Now, that's the message. So I, I take it. I'll take it as good. I'll take it as but, but how do you eat it? What are you going to do with this this message? How are you going to change yourself? How are you going to change? How are you going to grow from it? Because if God is good, He wants you to grow. And whole purpose is you get close to Him. How does this produce for you closer to Him? After the embarrassment, how do you have strength? And 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 because we're saying when the Almighty gives you a bracha, it's not just tit for tat. We're saying you got embarrassed, therefore I want to now. Where's my reward, God? Right, I'm scanning the stamp. And now I take this and I, I, since I reach a higher level, so the Almighty will come on and give me that schar to count to balance it. But on his own, that's what I want. I said, I grew from it. I'm a better person. I'm a better person. As a bad person, you don't deserve it. Now you're a new person, a better person. So as a bad person, you got your embarrassment. Now you're a better person. You just use that embarrassment to change and to grow. And now you're a better person. So now you're a better person. What's going to happen now? You're a different person. You're another, you know, you're another individual. And then, and if you're a higher level, so you deserve higher things and better things. So you have to remove the emotions when you get to the No, no, no. I say that. You have to handle the emotions. Not remove the emotions. <coughs> Don't take God gave you a punch. Why did he give you a punch? Because you need a punch. And you, no, not only need, you, in order for you to move, you, this kid needs to get spanked in order to change. So this kid, without the spanking, without ouch, is not going to move. 
So you got a spanking now. He, now just spanking, he moves it. Without the spanking, we're not going to move. The, the kid says, well, I don't, spanking is nothing anyway. It's only philosophical. It's only a moment how he playing in this world. I don't care about it anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Maybe really the kid needs to be spanked. When you spank the kid, the kid says, doesn't matter, you spank the kid. So now, so he now, didn't he didn't get the message. He didn't get the message. Right. Yeah. Really yeah. The answer is, we're not getting the message. We are not getting the message. We are not getting those messages. Now, when we get the message, the question is, how are we going to eat it and do it and grow from it that it turns from a negative to a positive? I'll also explain to you, the, some of the strongest forces in man is to remove negative. This is already the world knows about it. They ask, everybody always asks the question, what would I do if it wouldn't happen? Oh, so you don't get this. You don't get it. What's going to happen? How are you going to feel? Lousy, terrible thing. So you're running away from feeling bad, empty, whatever it may be. And that's a force in man. There's a force in man not to be lonely, not to be destitute. to whatever the force is or what has meaning in your life. Say your husband doesn't love. What does it mean not love? What's going to happen? What, what do you love? Know? You know, now you're going to be not loved. What, is that? What, what, what happens to you when you're not loved? So the force of not to be not loved forces you not to get love, but not to be not loved. Forces you to do 50 things. That's a very strong force. More than the force of love, the force of not being loved, or the fear of not being loved. I have a story. I'll tell you a true story. I heard this thing. You couldn't believe it. This woman is going, giving birth. Birth giving birth and she's on the table ready to give birth so the nurse asked her how much she weighs you know they have to know what they're doing right with you and her husband was there I said I can't tell you she was afraid that maybe she, she's too fat and the husband won't love her just think of the giving birth but her husband said it's a true story I can't believe it true story and then she wouldn't tell how much she weighs and the nurse has to know because <laughs> her husband is there true story true story because she's afraid that her husband won't love her. No, she's she crazy. Know. The mother and husband loves her. And she has children for her husband. Loads of children. And this and that. And you ask her, your husband will like, But down deep, there's a fear of not. And she's doing crazy things. A fear of the not. She's not going to be loved. But she's loved. No, she has the fear for something in a child or else. She feels she, she won't be loved and it won't happen. That's a tremendous force in her life. And she's working hard and doing 50 things. So the negative force is a strong force in people. Not, not, no, 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 not, not a force. So what do so, you do to break it? Oh, yeah, no, not, not, it's not a question of breaking. The question is... Recognizing it. No, recognize and using it to make it positive. How do you turn the negative into positive? How do you get this terrible mess you got slapped, beaten down? How are you going to turn out to give you strength, growth, happiness, and what's going to happen? That's what Moshe means. What well, does an enemy call on me? They, they knock him down, he's burst and nothing, he had no personality, he was zero. No. He got strength to it. He became a, became a big man. But the honor, he's a big man. You want a human being, you don't want a shmata. I think Moshe Rabbeinu was a shmata. I don't know, they really stuck on him. He's a nobody, he's a sissy, he's a, uh, an easy, an easy, what do you call it, an easy uh, sucker or an easy, uh, I don't know, Russian. Uh, I don't know what the language was. An easy guy for a, a donation, whatever you want to say, or doing things. That's not the story. He, he, had, he had tremendous strength, more strength than anybody else. He, had a he was able to carry a greater burden, bigger than Amit and Yaakov. He was able to get the Torah. He had that strength. Well, he had a cleave to have the strength to grow. He had a, he had a machine to grow and, and, and had the strength to uphold things. Not a, a negative thing. Anyway, I want to say something. Else. Uh, I want to talk about to build the internal self. That's really what they really want. See, most people play games and they want to know, and they're playing games called religious games. Uh, religious games are what? Uh, what do I wear? Where do I go? Do this, do that. And it may be you at your mind, not you at your mind. That's not the story. Those are outside things. There's an internal. How do you build internally in yourself positive your children, positive Abbas Hashem, in yourself and your children? It's not the game of. Where the clothing, not the hood, where you're going, what you're doing. Those things have to be corrected. It's not proper, it's not right. But the real growth has to be, where are you? Where's that kid? Is that your Shemayim, Aras Hashem? What's really happening? Is the kid really a, 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 really a good person? Bambi just don't 
But, but this is the real stuff. We are here in the real stuff. That's called the real growth. And most people, and everybody has certain games. So watch your games that you play, your religious games that you play. And and, and what do you do with it? What do you do with response to stimuli and different things? What do you response to things? And uh, the Almighty made a beautiful world. He put you into it. Greater than the, the angels. He made you a woman, whatever reason it is. And as you are, you say, Shosani Kirit Soho. You've made me according to your will. And everybody can reach heights of that. Sorry, I had Navua. There's no end. But it, it, but it has to start in turning yourself of growth, religious growth as a religious woman. Religious woman is not easy. It's not just about you and the quote. Uh, no, I'm not going to start it. It's more than that. Now, happiness doesn't mean you have things. You don't have things. What he loves me, he doesn't love me. There's also spiritual growth. And how do you view things? When something happens, how do you react? Is it your, your nefesh, the heinous acting and solving what you like and don't like? Is your spiritual part? Is it a combination of both? And you have to grow and, and, and develop yourself a bit. Now the summer months come in and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, where your kids going to go, what they're going to do, what they're going to do, you're tired, you're rest, everything, I don't say no, everything is true, but you have to always sit back, make a question of where is it going, what do I want, what does it do, did I react right, did I do wrong, should have done better, how can I prove myself, what's the message Hashem is giving me, what should I do, what's that story, very hard, right? but you're going to be coming from all different places, different, and you're all right, let's take one little story, I want to leave it, Let's take an example. All of a sudden, Hashem sends the, the Shivas of Canaan, sent them uh, to reach a very high heights of Nebuah, and the Nebuah goes away, and there's some people in the Machna, Eldad and Nadad, who now have Nebuah. And Yoshua sees it, and uh, he hears them saying, what does he hear them saying? That Moshe's going to die, and Yeshua's going to take over. Louder. Moshe's going to die and Yoshua's going to take over. And these are what Eldad and Nadad are saying. Right? So Yoshua sees that and he loves his Rebbe, the Moshe Rabbeinu. And these guys have a Nebu and they're spreading these, uh, these, these rumors around. How, how do you feel about it? And say, uh, I don't say, Hashem, your mother and father are going to die and uh, inherit the... We don't want to hear those words. Or as if something bad or something good is going to happen. You know what I mean? So Yoshua wants to defend and help his his Rebbe, she quickly tells what these guys, what these guys are doing, they're killing clients, you know, they already had the wood using it wrongly. So Moshe Rabbeinu answers back and says, what? Halavai, everybody should have uh, the wood. So what happened? What was the reaction? So my Rashi Shiva in his book, what's in that book called? Uh, Gems? Or, uh, my Rashi Shiva is book in English, what? In English, it's Majesty of Man. Majesty of Man. Imagine a man. Insights. Insights. Yeah. Explains a very interesting thought. There. You have the intellect and you have the emotions. But the real story is there that although emotionally Yoshua was right and he spoke up, he had to defend his Rebbe. But on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, uh, what was Moshe's position? Moshe was not everybody with another. Had Yoshua understood Moshe's position, it's a good thing I mean, they let everybody have it, then Yeshua would not have done send that. But Yeshua thought that his Rebbe thought certain things and therefore he reacted in a certain way. What do we see from here? What do we see from here? We see that uh, the person, when you have a stimuli, you have a response. Had Yeshua thought a little longer into the story, and not just emotionally make a decision, make an end, he would have come up maybe with the clue, you know, that you know, everybody has a right to admit not they, and they don't mean anything bad, and it should slip by. And you'd have to tell it, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, what they're saying. Or if he did, it should have been a different way, not demanding justice or doing something, doing something wrong. So the, therefore, Yoshua, 
in reacting to what happened, he was missing a certain dimension of understanding an evaluation of what should be his reaction be. Well, you have a reaction, emotional reaction, but you have to always say, well, is it the right reaction? Does this fit into the Torah? Maybe there's another fact that I'm not seeing or knowing about, and I'm not acting properly, or the result of it. So there's different steps. After you do feel what you feel, it doesn't mean as you feel what you feel, you have to express it and feel it. There are other steps in between that you have to think about. That's why you have a mouth, you have a thought and a mind, have a mouth, you have to open the mouth, you have to open the lips, the teeth, the tongue, has to move. You have to have sound, you have to work the whole story to say words. Before you say the words, you have to still have some time to think before you speak and think. I mean, he did think of it, he felt bad, you know, and therefore he thought he's right. And he had to think in another dimension, another growth. Maybe, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, what should he do? Maybe it's as far as he should have thought deeper into it. Therefore, it wasn't right. What I'm really saying is with yourselves also, that you have to always look a little deeper into your actions, what you're doing, how you feel, what's happening. And, um, and ask again, what does the Torah say? What should you do in such a case? Rather than decide you're going to do it. Right away. And you have to be right because that's what you felt. And your feelings are true. And therefore you'll do it. Now feelings true and to do, that would be good before Sinai. The time of Amor because it's his feelings, understanding is he made the mitzvahs. But once we have Sinai, we have the mitzvahs. So what we feel is important. But you have to know, does it fit into the category of mitzvahs, which means so what do I do? And am I pure in my feelings, what's happening? We have a different responsibility. Yeah. Hmm. Yoshua, was, he was saying they're abusing their their prophecy. Right. And, and Moshe Rabbeinu's response was, Baruch Hashem, in a prophecy, more people should be on That's that right. level? That's right. Now maybe they did wrong by saying what they said, but it was like a criticism. Yoshua was criticizing that they're using prophecy wrong. And he said, look, let's look to the and then you're hurting me. And, right? and he says, no, look at the, at the way of it. this prophecy, let everybody have prophecy. Doesn't that nice that he's protecting his work? Yeah, 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 that's that, nice. No, no, that part he gets rewarded for. Mm -hmm. That part he wins. But, mm -hmm. the, but it, a, a, a not just be totally. You know, mm -hmm. the religion has to be what? Mm -hmm. okay. That's all. You send a little gift package to somebody. You want to make sure that what? It's packaged right, has a bow on it, the words are just written just right, the stamp is just in the right place with the right picture. You should have care and concern in every action. The food comes out, you want it to look just so, and you put on this parsley, you want it to look like this right there, you want it to just smell just right, you want it to be right. And that's, that's very important. That's it. <laughs> you see that nice, reaction, yeah. that kind of thing, again, like the YM and other, like, it, you know, it's got too much, aren't something too much, too caring? You're, you're, you're right, 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 you have these little, uh, little uh, dates, and you have in there almonds, and you put a little, uh, what do you call it, on top of it, and the uh, white uh, coconut on it, and a nice little dolly, right? <laughs> and there it is, and they want these wonderful foods to make sure that the, this, this guru guy would, would just, it has to be just so that everybody had to be gently cleaned up extra place, really. Maybe you want to make it just so. Why do you want to make yourself so? Does that have meaning and value? Now, there are places where you're, where you're holding your money that because you have a big family, you have no time, you're not allowed to fuss. Because you, you go, or, 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 or the house goes, or the food goes, and you're big curious.